So in this question, uh, three conductors are connected to a voltage source uh, with this configuration that you see in the right. And some information are given, the value of the inductances and also the initial current for the uh, inductors. Um, so as you know, the, for inductors, uh, we need to have, we need to know their initial current. Uh, similarly, for capacitors, um, we need to know the initial voltages, okay, uh, to be able to calculate um, the voltage uh, of the capacitor and the current of the inductors, we need to know the initial values. So in this case, because we have inductors, the uh, initial values for the currents are given. Um, and... Uh, so the, the question wants us to calculate I1, uh, which is here, and also V of X for T greater than equal to zero. And later we also need to find the energy in M. Okay, at time T equal to zero and T equal to infinity. Okay, so let's just start uh, because uh, we have the V of S, so we know the, the value of the voltage and we would like to know the I1, let's say I1. So by looking at this circuit, um, somehow if I find the um, equivalent uh, inductor here, let's say MQ, then the circuit can be seen as an inductor with value of LEQ. We have V of S, and then we have I T. Okay, so this is the equivalent. And then, so I is going to this, so, so inductor, so we have this relation between current and voltage of inductor, which is V equal to L V I over D T. So therefore I can write V of S T is equal to L equivalent D of I one over D T. Okay, so again, the whole thing here, we have an equivalent inductor. And then the, the relationship between voltage and current of an inductor is V equal to L V I over DT. Okay. However, here, um, Vs is given. So I need to find I1. So I1, finding the I1 is the reverse of that. So it is 1 over L EQ times the integral of V of S T prime, dt prime, integral from zero to time t plus the initial value of the i. Okay. So it's, this is how we can find the currents of inductor if you have its voltage, one over L integral of and as you see, I, as you notice, I changed T to T prime here because I don't want you to confuse it with this T. This is the time uh, for I1 T. So integral from zero to T of Vs of T prime dT prime, and then plus the initial current. Because this is from zero to T, and then you use the initial current. So this is the formula that we have. We have. So just let's um, replace the value for that. I need to know L equivalent. Okay, so for L equivalent, as you see here, we have L2 and L3 in parallel, and then the parallel of that is in series with L1. So basically, L EQ is L2 in parallel with L3, and then the result of that is in series with L1. And as you know, for uh, inductors, um, if you have them in parallel, um, we have L2, L3 divided by L2 plus L3, and then that's added to L1. So I get L2 is 2 and L3 is 3. So 2 times 3 divided by 2 plus 3 plus L1, which is uh, 0.8. So this part is six over five, which is 1.2. So the parallel of these two is 1.2 Henry. 
and then the other one is 0 0.8 Henry. So you just add them, it becomes two Henry. So L equivalent is two Henry. Okay, so I'm going back to this integral that we had. I one T is one over two L equivalent integral from zero to T of V of S T prime. This is V of S is given. Now, because it says V of S T prime, so basically you have to change T to T prime. So it becomes 10 E minus five T prime, D T prime, and then plus the initial current of I1, which is negative six M. As you see, negative six M. Negative six, oh, perfect. So this integral, uh, as I have said in the class, it's a popular integral that we use a lot in the class. Integral of E minus A T, let's say D T is one over negative A E minus A T. So therefore here, I get half, and then I have a 10 also here, times E minus five, T prime, so one over minus five, e minus five t prime. But here we have also the range from zero to t and then plus negative six. Okay, so 10, two, five, uh, been eliminated, so you only have a negative one. And then just replace um, here, we just keep replacing t and zero in that equation. So you get E minus five T minus E minus five zero. And then of course you shouldn't forget about the rest of the equation. So E to the power of zero. E to the power of zero is always uh, one. So, so and there's a negative one here. So totally this becomes, um, if you add it, you get E minus E minus five T minus five. So this is I1, the value of I1 is this. So this is what you get that you got this. Okay, and the next part of the question wants us to find V of X. Okay, so this is the graph that we have. So I already know I1, so I1 is coming here. So now if I focus on this parallel, these two parallel inductors, so the V of X is the voltage across also the equivalent of that. So basically what I can say, I can say that, okay, so there is a equivalent of inductor here, L2 in parallel with L3, which is 1.2 Henry. And the voltage across that is V of X, as you see. And the current that is coming through this is also I1. Okay, so I know I1. So the voltage, the relationship between voltage and current of an inductor, V equal to L, which is the equivalent here, 1.2 Henry, E I1 over DT. Okay, so, so next part to find V of X. So again, <clears throat> there was this inductor that it was carrying I1, but then these two inductors, the equivalent of that was 1.2 Henry. And I'm interested to know the voltage V of X. So <clears throat> V of X is L, which is 1.2. V I want to 
E of I one. So derivative of <coughs> this. So derivative of that. Uh, just to be complete, write this down. D over dt of the I one, which is minus E minus RT minus B. Okay. Derivative of this part I have minus here. And then derivative of E minus 5t, this is minus 5e e minus 5t. And the derivative of this is this constant, so that's zero. Good, so this becomes 5e minus 5t. And then times 1.2, which is uh, 6. So that's 6e minus 5t. That is the next e greater than to Okay, so as a reminder, similar to the integral that we had there, we also have the derivative d of e uh, well, at e to at e a e to of at. e to the power of 80, derivative of that with respect to time is the constant a times the same function e to the power of 80. Okay. So this is also the voltage as the problem wants us. So we are done with this part. And then uh, uh, lastly, it says find the energy stored in inductor L1. At t equal to zero and t equal to infinity. So if I, I can find some space here. Okay, I can, I can just. Right here, maybe. So I want the energy. Starting L1 at time zero. So, as you know, the, we have a formula V equal to one half times the inductance L1, and then the current at that time square. So, at energy at time zero is half of L1, I1, and zero square, the same with infinity. The energy at L1 at time infinity is half of L1, then I1 infinity squared. Okay, so let's see, I have I1, zero, yeah, I1 at time zero. Uh, it's negative six amp, it, it was given by the problem. So it becomes one half of L1, which is 0.8 times negative six squared, becomes 14.4. Joules. That's um, for energy at time zero, and then energy at time infinity. For energy at time infinity, as you see, we know we need the current at infinity, but we already calculated I one for all the times. So this is I one, and now what is the I one at infinity? At infinity. The first term, because it's exponential, it goes to zero. So let me put this here. If t goes to infinity, at this becomes zero at infinity. So we are only left with negative five. So therefore, this becomes half of 0.8 times negative five squared, which is 10. So just notice that here for finding the current of infinity, I looked at the current for all the times, and then I assume t goes to infinity. When t goes to infinity, this e minus five t goes to zero, and then we are left with only negative five. So therefore, I one at infinity is negative. 
and I use that to find the energy. Okay. 